In this video, we're talking about CPU cores. What are they? How do they work? And how many do you need for video editing, graphic design, photography, or whatever creative profession that you are in? If you're new to the channel, I'm Benji Kaiser, and you're watching Don't Tech With Me, the place where you find the latest tech news as well as tech terms explained. So if that sounds like your kind of place, consider subscribing and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. Currently, what you are watching is the series that I'm doing on tech terms. And specifically, we're talking about CPU cores. What is a CPU core? Well, of course, it is the amount of cores on a CPU. Uh, when the CPU was first developed, it had one CPU core on it. Every task that the computer ran was handled on that singular CPU core. But as technology developed, computer manufacturers brought us multiple CPU cores cores. Now, I will interject quickly if you're curious about other tech terms to be explained, specifically for video editors and designers, you can head on over to the channel and check out the different playlists where I explain each different component in the computer in depth. So core counts identified. How many cores are now available on CPUs? Well, to explain when you what you see as far as terminology is concerned, two cores is a dual core, four cores is a quad core, Six cores is a hexacore, and eight cores is an octacore. Now we move up to 12 cores, 16 cores now, and actually the largest core count on a processor should be coming out this year from Ryzen. So this was announced at CES 2020. They have a 64 core processor CPU coming out in 2020. This processor is probably going to be around 3000 to 3500 or beyond dollars. So it's pretty insane how expensive this processor is, but it is a beast of a processor. Okay, so how does how do cores work? How does it work? To simplify things, each core is seen by the computer as its own processing unit. At first, manufacturers tried to install multiple CPUs on one motherboard. Um, so they try to take separate CPUs, build a larger motherboard with more CPU slots, and build it out with more CPUs. But that served to be expensive, plus there was the issue of latency. If you're curious about what latency is, I wanna make a whole other video on that, so keep an eye on the channel or the YouTube cards above. The CPU is able to split up the work onto an individual core. So, Core 1, Photoshop. Core 2, Premiere Pro. Core 3, Google Chrome. Core 4, Spotify. So rather than doing multiple CPUs on a motherboard, they were able to internally alter the CPU to have extra cores. This allows you to divide the work, and each core handles a specific program. But the question comes, what if I have more programs open? So if, say, for instance, you then open another app inside of Adobe, so like InDesign or Illustrator, what if you have more programs open than cores available? Will your computer explode? Well, no, it will not explode. When you load a program, say Photoshop, a process is created, okay? So that process is assigned its own memory, so RAM, if you wanna watch more about that, I have another video on the channel about RAM, and credentials, so that's kind of like a serial number. So it has an identifier number and it has a certain amount of RAM attributed to that process. The system will assign that process to a specific core. If there are no cores available, it will virtually split the core into one of the core's threads. Now, threads are something that was developed after cores as a way to virtually divide out a core to create more cores. So you'll see this in advertising on computers as you know four cores eight threads eight cores 12 threads eight cores 16 threads so that's what we're talking about here i'll talk about more thread i will talk more about threads in another video and again you can check that out once it is released on the channel if there are no cores or threads available then the process waits its turn in line in the queue until it is called to action so the really cool thing is about the cpu is it has an organization system so it, if it can't attribute to a core, it will go to a thread. If it can't attribute to a thread, it will wait in the process and it, however long it takes to get through the process and then it will activate. If it is an, an unessential task to that moment, it will actually sometimes cancel out that process and it will move on to more important things. So it's really neat how intelligent they have made the cores and threads and the processes inside of the CPU. 
So more cores equals a faster computer, right? Well, not necessarily. There are a few reasons why core count alone is not enough to make for a faster processor. Here are a few things to consider when choosing a processor. The clock speed, which is rated in megahertz. The amount of threads, like we said, 8 core, 12 thread, 8 core, 16 thread, so on and so forth. The instructions per cycle, this is very important and you cannot regularly find this information. This is not something that computer companies advertise that, oh, our processor can do X IPC. But that's something we're gonna talk about in a future video and why that is important and why a four core processor could be faster than say a six core processor because of the IPC rating. And then of course the watts. So how many watts the processor can reach? Is the processor made for say battery life or is the processor made for high performance? Is it made for video editing or gaming? What is that specific processor and how is it built to, and what is it built for? Okay, so the last thing to consider is how many cores and threads do you need for video editing and graphic design? Well, like I said, this will differ according to the IPC, the instructions per cycle, but there's really no way to understand that specific uh, classification because manufacturers don't offer that information to us. However, I will note that I use a four core, eight thread processor on my current laptop. I edit 1080p video. I do graphic design work on it. So I'm using Premiere Pro, I'm using Affinity Photo, I'm using Adobe InDesign. Um, so those are the programs I'm using and it runs it well. It's not the best performance. I do occasionally get some slowdown with the four cores, eight threads, but it is a good processor. It's the i7-7700HQ. I do plan on building my own desktop computer my own PC build, and I'm gonna have at least six cores and eight threads on that build because I wanna be able to start doing 4K video editing and have it very smooth in the timeline, have quick exports, and be able to run multiple programs at the same time. Now, we're gonna talk more about clock speed, latency, we're gonna talk about instructions per cycle, uh, we're gonna talk about threads in future videos. For now, this is a quick walkthrough on cores. I hope this has been helpful to you. My name is Benji Kaiser, you're watching Don't Tech With Me, and I'll see you here on the next episode.